Good evening, welcome to genesiswatchmaking.co.uk A customer of mine was asking me what the timing data was that I sent him so I thought I'd make this short video to explain the equipment we use and what it produces. So this is the latest technology from Witchy, a Swiss company state-of-the-art machine to measure all the functions of a watch. It has several modes which I can select on the touch screen here and they all measure different aspects of the the watch just based on listening to the watch. This one which is the most straightforward shows the actual rate of the watch and we're going to just get a, a result in a second here as soon as it fires up after 10 seconds it gives us the rate of the watch in seconds per day so that's showing us a one second a day gain if it was a loss it would be negative this is showing the beat of the watch and I'll explain a bit more about that later and this is showing the amplitude of the wristwatch balance and then in this machine it's connected to a further device called the Micromat C and this is a motorized device to test the watch in different positions so when I select the next position, the micromat will move to that position and test it. And I can, I can run several tests in all the positions and diagnose the faults with the watch. Now this watch has been serviced, but when it came in, it was a completely different story with the timekeeping. And when the watch first comes into the workshop, I always switch to this mode here, which is the sequence mode and this is going to run a sequence test for us in all the positions so when we press it to start first of all it'll wait for 30 seconds for the watch to stabilize in that position it'll then start the test and it'll time each position for one minute and then it'll move to the next I'm just going to put the camera into the stand here We'll come back to that watch in a moment. But this is the result from that exact watch when it came into the workshop. And what it shows us is this. There's three columns. The first column is the rate in seconds per day. And it's the rate in seconds per day if it was to stay in that position for the full 24 hours. Now these positions are in note form. The first one is dial up. So if I take this Omega as an example, that first position would be like that. CH is dial up. CB is dial down. And then the vertical positions are measured with the watch on edge. And the number at the start of the column there, for this one here for example, 9H means number 9 on the dial high. So that would be there. That would be 3 high, and 6 high, and 12 high are obvious. So first of all, looking at these rates, what you first of all notice is that some of them are highlighted in red. And those are any readings that are outside of tolerance. And this is a tolerance setting for a modern chronometer. So obviously this watch is badly out of adjustment and very much in need of a service come to the reasons for this soon. Again, sticking with the rate, this value here, the X value, this is the line that the customer is most interested in because this is the line that says what the machine thinks the watch will do overall. It's not exactly an average. The machine takes into account the amount of time spent in each position on average and it comes up with a figure for what it thinks the watch will do. This one, the delta, this is the difference between the highest and the lowest. And this is more interesting to a watchmaker who wants to get this value as small as possible. Just very briefly, this value here compares the vertical positions and the horizontal positions, uh, an average of each and the difference between them. And finally, this one 
is the difference between the six o'clock high and the dial up because you spend a lot of time with the watch on the wrist with six o'clock high and a comparison with how it's laid down at night which is often dial up is interesting to a watchmaker and obviously we want to keep all these three values as low as we can to achieve a stable rate here. The next column is the beat and this is a measurement of the in microseconds of the difference between how much time the balance swings in one direction to how it swings in the other. Now it's not exactly that but that's a good analogy and what we want is for this value to be absolutely as low as possible. They can't all be zero, that's impossible, but they can be uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, that sort of value and anything above 0 0.5 is, is out of beat. The amplitude, this is a measure of how far the balance is swinging and it's measured in degrees of a circle this, but this balance is barely going. I would expect the two first positions to be somewhere around 270 and these positions to be somewhere around 240, 250. That's for this caliber. This is actually a Rolex. It's a, a GMT Master caliber 3185. It was made in 1989 and it had been serviced once, although there's no mark in the case back. Um, and what the what the previous watchmaker had done is he put a big kink in the hairspring that controls the balance, and that had caused this big error between the positions. Now to get these positions accurate, what you have to do is initially have the watch clean and serviced, demagnetized, and then make sure that the hairspring is exactly central and exactly flat as it controls the balance. Having done that the weights on the balance can be adjusted to bring these to time. We're just going to look at that in a moment. The watch that we're talking about, the 3185 Rolex Calibre, uh, was serviced today. This is a snapshot that was taken earlier and we're just finishing the um, the final timing of it now so I'm going to take this back out of here and have a look at the witchy machine again and we'll get a look at how it's doing now so it's on the fourth position out of the six position test now and what we can see here is the three first positions now the four first positions showing on the, the trace here and this one is one second a day gain a two second a day gain there three seconds a day gain in the third position two seconds a day in this position so it's looking like it's going to need to be regulated down very slightly but the important thing to note is the exactitude between the positions and keeping these values very close together is what's most important in getting a stable and sound picture for your watch. Just looking at this fifth position briefly the machine will take 60 seconds now to measure this position you see that the amplitude now is drastically improved. The rate is fine and the beat is fine. I'm just going to move forward quickly because we don't want to wait for that to finish. I've got a snapshot of a timing I did with that watch earlier. I'll put that in now and we'll just have a quick look at that to finish. So here's the finished result for the customer. As you can see the the rate here now. So the prediction here that the watch is going to keep a, a gain of one second a day. 
Most customers like a gain rather than a loss, so I'm inclined to leave that, but I might just regulate it back a, uh, a slight amount. These figures, which I said at the start, very good to keep these low so that the overall stability of the watch is high. And this should ensure that the watch keeps this similar rate for many, many months or even years to come. Again, the Delta now, all figures in green. Uh, no, no shocks to say it's, it's out of tolerance. And in fact, this result is a very long way inside the chronometer rating for wristwatches. I hope you've joined that little explanation of the timing results that we can get with the new Witchy X1 G2. And thank you very much from genesiswatchmaking.co.uk.